you got to be a certain type of person to get into flying without an engine. The fact that we're able to leave the ground, leave everything behind, fly through the skies on nylon and strings is exceptional. The Rat Race is a seven day long paragliding competition with 200 participants that also serves as the U.S. National Paragliding Championship. My name is Nick Grease, I'm a professional paraglider pilot. A paragliding race is very similar to a sailboat race. Um, they race around buoys, we race around several different GPS coordinates that we have to hit along the way. Each morning the race course is determined by the weather for that day and a course typically ranges from 40 to 70 miles long. The first person to finish the course every day gets a thousand points. If someone's five seconds back, they get 995, and so on and so forth. And then at seven days, you add up all your scores together, and whoever has the most points wins. I grew up in Long Island in a suburb close to New York City. I went to Beloit College in Wisconsin, and after that I returned to Manhattan to take a job at a PR firm. My second day of work was uh, September 11th, 2001. So I was walking to work and I saw the first plane um, hit the World Trade Center from the street. I don't know if that played a, a, a significant role, but it played some role in, in, in me deciding that I needed to do something sooner than later if I wasn't completely satisfied with what I was doing. So I sold all my possessions, I lived out of my car, all I did was fly. I've dedicated my life since 2001 to flying paragliders. For many years I've been one of the top pilots in the U.S. And that to me is a sign of success. Watching the start of a paragliding race is a sight to behold. A hundred pilots launching off a hill and then getting up into the starting paddock, which is what we call a gaggle. The start it can be a chaotic experience of people that are trying to get to the top so that they're in the best position. So everybody jockeying for position. Once that starts, it's just a glorious experience of, of you know, rallying through mountain ranges for a whole day with your friends. After seven days, you're pretty exhausted, but you know, that's also the, the real joy in doing any kind of endurance event. Just like with anything, um, whether you're trading stocks or riding bikes or flying paragliders, you're always trying to make progress and increase your ability to succeed. And you know, paraglide competition is a beautiful example of pitting your skills, not only against your competitors, but against the elements. I grew up in the family of skywriting. That's just a little kid, that's all I knew. Just like being an artist in the sky. I'm Greg Stennis, and I own a company called Skytypers with my son, Steven Stennis. My dad was one of the original skywriters. He started in 1931. The one airplane travels a big circle if he's gonna make an O, and that takes a lot of time to do that. And he decided, hey, there's gotta be a faster way to do this. I'll just do it with a bunch of airplanes. And so he came up with the method of sky typing. Five airplanes flying in formation. For instance, if we're gonna make an I, everybody lets out just one puff. There's your I. If you want to turn that into an L, it's one puff, plus the bottom guy lets out three more puffs. There's your L. This is a very specialized form of flying. Most of my pilots have got you know, like 10,000 flying hours, so they're very experienced. We fly AA-5B Tiger planes. When we fly, it's roughly 45 minutes to get up to altitude, which is 10,000 feet. A typical sky typing message is 20 characters, sometimes 25, and that's roughly five miles in length. Each letter is the size of the Empire State Building, 1,200 feet tall. 
They're the biggest ads in the world, and you can't miss them. The whole sky becomes your billboard. I do this because not only is it fun, because I love flying, but I like the, the accomplishment of what we do, because the people we fly for, they're all thrilled. We've got something like 120 years of skywriting in the family. My dad trained me, and I've trained my son, and I'm very proud about the whole thing. The very first time I left the ground in a gyroplane, I knew it was over. I, my life was done, it was all gonna be about gyroplanes. And it was not just because I was in the air, but I was depending upon myself, so my safety was in my own hands. It was one of the most exhilarating sensations that I've ever received in my life. My name is George Jacob, and I'm known as Gyro Jake. I build gyroplanes from scratch. What a gyroplane is, basically a hybrid airplane helicopter, but it's neither of the two. How many gyroplanes? I would say I built close to 20. I lost count around 13 a few years back. I imagine what I want and what components should fit together. Then I machine out and weld up the parts that are necessary to get the job completed. So sometimes it can take two months, sometimes it can take a year. And there's times I look at it and I go, man, I did that and it works and I'm gonna fly it. When I first started, it was a pretty small clique in Florida. And so we'd get together on the weekends. Today, the gyro community is probably increased by a hundredfold, especially with the new revolution of the factory built gyros. To do it yourself, builders are kind of like the dinosaurs. They're on their way to being extinct. There aren't many people that spend most of their free time building a gyro plane, one after the other after the other. There's no incentive, like money, that compels me to do this. It's just because this is my pleasure, this is my joy, this is my passion. At Aviation High School, we take all your regular academic classes, English, social studies, physical education, but then also we have ground operations, carburetors, magnetos, jet engines. This airplane behind me is my classroom every day. I'm Arne Shenchik, and I'm a student at Aviation High School, and I currently go to class at JFK Airport. Aviation High School is a public New York City high school. Students at Aviation High School spend four to five years working on repairing airplanes and in the process they get their licensing to work in the industry from the Federal Aviation Administration. We have a hangar on site in our main building where we have 17 aircraft. We've been teaching students for 81 years to work in the aviation industry. We're very proud to be the school that certifies some of the most mechanics in the country. The responsibility of an aircraft mechanic is huge. I have to ensure that every single bolt, every single screw, every single piece of wire is safely secured on that aircraft, prevent anything from happening while it's in the air. When we sign off any part, it's basically our signature that's allowing the airplane to get into the sky, and our signature is worth gold. We are letting over 100 people on the ground get into the sky and get to their destination. I like working with my hands, I like getting out in the world. I love seeing the work that I put in flying there. My way of expressing myself has always been physical. My mom told me it's like since I was little, it's like if I would be angry or happy or whatever, you would see it in, in my body language. For me, having a new way of challenging my body, a new way of pushing the limits of my, what my body can do, that was the, the thing that really got me hooked in flying.
My name is Inka Tito and I'm a dancer and a world champion indoor skydiver. I started dancing when I was three years old and as long as I remember, I've been dancing. When indoor skydiving came along, I found something for the first time that I was more passionate about than I ever was about dancing. Suddenly I realized like I've just found a new way of dancing. It's just on a different kind of dance floor. The discipline that I compete in is called freestyle, but when I'm speaking about my flying overall, I prefer to use the term air dancing because it's not just about competing and that set discipline. It's about creating something new, exploring the limits of what we can do in flying. And I would like to take flying from being a sport towards being a form of performing arts. Flying for sure is way harder than it looks like. The wind speeds can go up to 180 miles an hour. You have to be strong, you have to be flexible. A lot of the body positions look easy, but they actually require a lot to perform them nicely. So a split, for example. It might look like I'm just resting in, in that flexible body position, but I'm actually all the time pushing against the airflow to have control. I don't always like the use of the word talented because it makes it sound like only if you have that talent before you even start flying, you're gonna get good. I've always been like a hard worker myself. So if I really wanna get good at something, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. It just depends on how much you want it.